you guys. Today is going, or today, well, yeah. What? <laughs> this video is going to be the last video in a little mini series on my channel where I am redoing my entire makeup collection. You can watch all the other videos about why. They're just getting longer and longer every time I try to explain this, <laughs> but I'll try to do it quickly. Point A, used to be a huge makeup lover, was a makeup artist, had every makeup release that ever existed, got sick of it, stopped buying new stuff. Point B, had a baby, just had a baby. He's like seven months old right now. I need to get my shit together, feeling frumpy, want to play with beauty again. Point C, makeup is better than it's ever been. Watch my other videos with this kind of haul status going on because so much good stuff is out right now, it's kind of blowing my mind. Point four, <laughs> that's the TL, TLDR of it. Um, go watch the other videos. There is also an update video about where I've been, how things are going, what's happening moving forward, yada, yada, yada. That's not what you're here for, I'm assuming. We are here to talk about new cheek products. That's kind of the, the gist, because the first video I did was eyeshadow palette. The last one I did was complexion, so foundation, concealer, powder, things of that nature. And today is whatever's left. So there's cheek, bronzer, some lip, some mascara-y things, just whatever's left. If you guys wanna see like any particular content surrounding these products, if you want reviews, if you want wear tests, if you want tutorials, if you want demos, tell me what you want down below. I will figure it out. If I don't make it into a whole video, I'll probably make it into a TikTok or something. That being said, come find me on my other social media platforms. Oh my God, I haven't done that in so long. Anyway, check the down bar, all the stuff, let's go. So there has been a theme of this new makeup collection I'm starting and the main theme, A number one, it's all high end, but that is not forever. I actually have a huge list on my phone of drugstore makeup. In fact, if you guys have any recommendations, drop them down below. I use high end stuff for like my compare the high-end stuff, most of the time, not always, kind of tends to be the cream of the crop. So I compare everything else to it, even if it's not super expensive. Does that make sense? Anyway, theme is a lot of makeup artist owned brands. So we've had a lot of makeup by Mario, a lot of Natasha Denona, some Danessa Myricks. For cheeks, we got a good little bit of Patrick Ta, starting with the cheese sculpted contour and bronzer palette. Let me just say, I have been following Patrick Ta as a makeup artist since 2016, 2017, it's been a long time. I love his makeup style. It is so beautiful. It's the epitome of the makeup is not wearing his model. Like in fashion, there is this acronym that's supposed to help you figure out what pieces to buy it, and it's ABC, accentuate, balance, and conceal. Makeup is the same thing. You should accentuate what works, balance what needs balancing, conceal what you don't like. And Patrick Ta, in my opinion, is one of the best examples of that. I'm sorry, I could go on and on. So when he came out with his line, all that to say, a few years ago, I was like, yes, give it to me. Never tried any of it. <laughs> but I will say one of the reasons I like makeup artist founded brands, many reasons. I, I think that they have superior taste in product and performance of the product. They think about things from the perspective of like, what is gonna get the most use? What is most universally flattering? What is easiest to work with? Because they're a lot more persnickety about their products. They need to work every time, work well, and work on a lot of people because they can't schlep everything they own everywhere. And I can also see it evident in some of the packaging choices that makeup artists tend to bring into their collections. And Patrick Ta is a really good example of it because let me tell you something. For years, I would complain about companies who would put out products that had a cream and a powder and no component to protect the cream because inevitably you're gonna kick up some powder into that cream product and it's going to ruin it. It just will. I've seen it more times than I care to count. Again, especially when I was a pro artist and some of my palettes I would buy would be that way. Or if like, God forbid, you put like your lipstick palette or your concealer palette too close to your bronzer palette, powder gets kicked up into it, it ruins it. So when I saw him come out with these cheap products with this little flap, it's such a small thing. It's the little things that get me. Anyway, this is She Sculpted. It's the medium one. This is like my tan contour. When I'm more fair, I'll probably have to go down. It's not that I don't like this. It's just almost too light for me, which seems impossible because I am not super tan, but even with the medium, it, it almost seems just a smidgen too light and or it's just a taste change I need to make, like maybe my contours. Cause first of all, y'all evidently, I have gotten a little chunky. <laughs> So I've had a baby and I'm a little more heavy on the contouring now cause I'm like trying to hide it. 
to no avail. It's no hiding. But yeah, contour for me has been a little heavier, heavier duty, no pun intended. And maybe this is just a little lighter than I'm used to, but it doesn't matter. The formula is gorgeous. The color is gorgeous. I just think I need to mess with it some more. I do really, really love this. I love all of his stuff, spoiler alert, and this kind of rose gold packaging. It's just gorgeous. Like he's done such a great job with his line from what I can tell. If you guys have tried a lot of his lip products, please let me know what you think because I don't know if I wanna try the palettes, the eyeshadow palettes, I have plenty of those, but the lip products seem interesting to me. Tell me what you think. What are your favorites? I wanna know. This is the Patrick Ta. I got two of his cheeks, like his blush palettes. I have She's That Girl and She's Flushed. Side note, has he indicated at all that he intends to make this type of like duo in a highlighter formula? Cause he should. I don't know if that's feasible cause I feel like a cream highlighter doesn't always work as well as like a liquid or a powder. But if you could find a way to do that, Mr. Ta, I would love it. Anyway, this is She's That Girl. She's That Girl is a pinky coral. Now I bought a few other blushes before I bought these. Like I bought some, oh my gosh, this itchy nose thing. I bought um, some Juvia's Place. I bought some She Glam. Yeah, that was the most of it. So I've been buying a lot more blush because blush is having a moment. Look, you guys, I don't dislike blush, but the redness that I have on my face is on my cheeks. So sometimes when I put too much blush on my cheeks, I'm like, is that blush or is that my redness? Side note, I'm getting a CO2 uh, laser resurfacing treatment done on Valentine's Day. Stay tuned to watch that process. I'm gonna have baby skin, I cannot wait. This is <laughs> such a good formula. The powder is so soft and buttery and velvety and the cream, the texture of it's really nice as well. He actually designed these with the intention of you being able to, and you guys, these are not new products. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't know. You're supposed to be able to put the powder on top of the cream, or excuse me, the cream on top of the powder, if you so choose. The idea being the cream is gonna have a more skin-like appearance. So it will give you the kind of opacity and pigment of layering these. But when the cream goes on top of the powder, it's like that glowy, dewy vibe. And it actually works, I've tried it already. Let me know if you guys have any other of these that you really like. like I believe he came out with a red, red blushes. Again, I don't know if red blushes for me because every time I put on something too red, I, I'm worried my skin looks irritated. <laughs> but I know he has a red a lot of people like. I know he has like that kind of Dior baby pink people love. What's your favorite one of these? If you've picked it up, please let me know. This is She's Flushed and this is the one I've used the most. I don't know why I'm drawn to this. My daughter was like, oh, you love these like, dusty nude colors. I, I like this. Like it's kind of a a peachy bronze kind of moment. Like it's more neutral where this is pretty vibrant. I find this like a winter blush, like a fall blush. And this makes me think of like summer, spring. I do really, really like both of these. I have worn this one the most. I find with this one though, the cream goes on amazingly well. In fact, just so you guys know. I also have bought a lot of new brushes. I picked up the Angie Hot and Flashy BK Beauty Collab and her A507 brush. This is the best brush you will ever use to apply cream blush. It's so like soft and fluffy and it just blends out like a dream. I don't know. This is a really good match in my opinion. The cream is very, very pigmented. The powder is almost more pigmented. Like if I try to layer these together, it's like, girl, she got on blush. I know everyone likes that look. I'm not opposed to it. I just, like I said, I get a little blush insecure. This is two of the makeup, my makeup by Mario blushes in earthy pink and dusty rose. I picked these up because Nikki LaRose, I always want to say Nikki La Rosa, did a full face of Makeup by Mario and she was talking about the blushes being so exciting to her and I was like, girl, if you like it, I'll love it. This one is, I need like a monocle to pull out when I have to read because I just can't y'all. Dusty Rose, this is Dusty Rose. Again, neutral, almost like ideal lip colors. I feel like his blushes would be beautiful lipsticks as well. His formula, I think, you know, compared to the Patrick Ta is a little bit more, what do I wanna say? I almost wanna say waxy, but that's not even the word. This is the Dusty Rose, this is Earthy Pink. It's just, it's different. It's not better, it's worse. There, there is a difference. I do feel like these last forever. They blend out amazing. They're really long wearing. Most, most of the time with me, blush. It's so finicky with me. Cause like I said, if it's too much, I feel like it looks like I have rosacea, 
but yet I don't want it to go away. And it's always the first thing to go away when my makeup starts to fade, but not, not the case here. Everything I've tried from Makeup by Mario is an impeccable. So if you guys have more things from him that you guys are enjoying, please let me know. Oh my gosh, this is the Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer from House Labs. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. This was one of the last things to show up. So this collective haul was like a few orders because maybe I wanted to buy it on Sephora, but it was sold out. So I had to go, I had to go here, I had to go there things came back in stock, but this was one of the last things to show up. And at this point, I had been getting so much new stuff in that I was so excited about that I just, I, I've said it in every video, I kept going up to my husband and my daughter and being like, makeup is so good now. Cause I haven't really been buying new releases for the longest time. This being one of the last things to show up, I couldn't believe it got better. This is the, the velvet bronzer in the color light level four. It says it's a velvet bronzer and that is, the most accurate description. I have never felt a powder product of any kind, bronzer, blush, whatever, that feels like this. Like it almost feels like a cream. It's not, it's so soft and the way that it blends, it's like, like it just turns into like vapor on your skin and gives you just this gorgeous bronzy veil of color. House Labs, y'all, I said this in my last video because I was talking about Lady Gaga's initial makeup situation which was house laboratories please enlighten me did is this an an offshoot of house laboratories because house laboratories when it came out on amazon a few years ago i was like really girl thoroughly unimpressed just couldn't it, it looked chintzy and uninspired house labs though i've only tried three things so it's this the foundation and the concealer unbelievable unbelievable who is formulating at headquarters give them a raise <laughs> they are killing it awesome bronzer obviously it's january brand bronzers are not so exciting right now but come like spring summer when you guys are stocking up your new bronzers like get this just do it this is the only highlighter i picked up and i might be sending it back because this is not what i wanted this is the dior backstage um highlighter palette i wanted the one that has like the pink in it but this is like a it's more like a skin tone color. Frankly, these two top shades are not even highlighters. Like they're just glitter or something. They do nothing. So this color is the only one that's an actual highlighter and it's beautiful. And then this is too dark for me. So I really only, I have this stupid palette with one thing in it I can actually use. I'm really bummed. I don't know what I was thinking or why I didn't pay attention to that. Even if I keep this, which I probably will now that I just put my grubby little fingers all in it, I'm definitely still gonna get the other one. That was the one I really wanted. I didn't actually realize there was two of these until this showed up and I was like, wait, why does it one rave about this? And then I figured out this isn't actually what I thought it was. So this is the only highlighter I picked up because highlighters just, I don't know. They're not the most exciting thing in the world to me. They take up such a tiny portion of my face. That I've been using Benefits highlighter it's called cookie i think for over a year and i love it i'm almost out of it it's the best <laughs> so i'm just not highlighter crazy if there's a highlighter out there i know the rare beauty is super popular but it's supposedly like chrome and i don't really like that either so if you guys have a really good highlighter recommendation let me know this is the patrick ta precision point something brow pencil it's too light for me my hair right now is like not black but it's almost, and I need really dark eye pencils. I can get away with a lighter brow gel, which I actually think looks, looks really cool in general, not the base. My eye pencil or my brow pencil is my base. This is just way too light. The pencil itself is perfect. It's super pointy and tapered. And if you like the benefit uh, precisely my brow and you think that one's really, really good because of how tiny it is, this is even smaller. So. This is perfect for drawing hairs in. It's just too light for me, which, you know, what are you gonna do? I think I was worried if I got it too dark, it would be even more so unusable, but this just really, I can't do anything with it. It basically disappears because my natural brows are darker than this even, so. Bummer. This is the Kosas Airbrow. You guys, me and brows, we have been, we've been going at it for a few years. Like it's been a real struggle. I was really into soap brows and then that turned into the Anastasia brow freeze for a while. And like, I remember, what do you guys ruin this for me? I figured out how to make the Dagum brow freeze work for me. And like, you just couldn't tell me nothing. I thought I was just so hot to trot. And then one of you commented and said, Whitney, I just can't get past the brow. Something about them reminds me of like an old man eyebrow. And I know exactly what you mean when you say that. I saw the, I know I can picture it. And I was like, oh, this is ruined now. 
because that's all I can think of when I see it. And I also think of it when I see it on other people too now. Anyway, then it was like I was doing brow lamination and brow tinting and that got too cumbersome. Again, I had a baby, I had time for any of that stuff. So I've been trying to figure it out. And right now, today, you're probably gonna have someone complain about my brows in the comments. I actually really like them today. I like the routine that I have and this is part of it. I've tried a lot of these kind of fiber building brow gels in the past or any type of brow gel. Like Benefit actually has some pretty good brow gels. Their fluff up brow wax is kind of like a uh, spoolie version of the brow freeze so it's better to me they're actual just like 24 hour brow setters really good i like all the benefits brow products but this kosis air brow like in terms of giving your brows movement and length and that fiber building business this is pretty freaking good this is literally the first thing from kosis i've ever tried i know everybody is so horny for this brand it's just never been interesting to me i don't know what it is branding is like I could have a whole second channel just talking about branding around beauty products. I love the story that it tells. I love colors and fonts and, and ambassadors and the campaigns, like all of it. I'm a sucker for it, I love it. And nothing about Kosas's Kosas's branding does anything for me. So there's just never been any interest, but Nikki La Rose, La Rose, talked me into this and boy oh boy, this is amazing. Also, can I just say, and will you guys help me, something about this packaging, this clear purple, this reminds me of something from my childhood and I don't know what it is. Like, is it a toy? Is it like, a, some, I feel like it has something to do with Barbie, but I don't know what. Was it like a marker, something? There is something nostalgic in here. I cannot figure out what it is. Something about this reminds me of my childhood. Anyway, this, 10 out of 10. If you guys have like nary brows, like I have, like nary a brow, you have to do all the work yourself, you would love this, I promise. Speaking of my lack of follicular robustness, <laughs> my hair is like me and my daughter were talking about this the other day because she, I call her the girl with all the gifts. She is tall and slender and has no pores and long lashes and full brows and thick hair. And she's just beautiful. She's a freaking walking angel. But her thing is like, as with most people, if you end up getting a lot of hair, like on your head, on your brows and your lashes, you have to deal with it everywhere. You don't just get it some places. So my plus in life is I have like no body hair. Like I have no hair on my arms. My body hair is completely inoffensive. It's not hard for me to manage it. I know not everybody has that story. Other hair, the hair on my head, my lashes and my brows, I'm constantly fighting with. I'm adding and trying to grow and trying to fake the funk all the time. Which brings me to mascara. Mascara and me are just, I could care less. <laughs> I've gone through phases where I've tried to not wear fake lashes. The amount of work that goes into making mascara look like anything on me is not even worth it. It's just quicker to put on fake lashes for me at this point. I did lash extensions for like 20 minutes. First of all, they made, they were so uncomfortable to get, like my eyes watered the whole time. And then I feel like everyone who does lash extensions does this thing where they like take the lash too far out here and it makes sure I look like the, Girl, I haven't made a video in a long time. Obviously, I just wanna chat, but <laughs> I decided to try this Dior Show Maximizer because the owner of BK Beauty, I think her name was Lisa D, talked about it. You know, I tried the Lancome one. I did like it back then. I'm gonna try to make mascara work for me, so I'm testing this. And then this is the Hourglass Instant Extension Mascara. I typically don't buy expensive mascara. Like, if I have an expensive mascara, it's because a brand sent it to me. It's not something... I go out and buy. The last mascara I bought for myself was that L'Oreal, L'Oreal Telescopic, the one that everyone got mad about, that one girl on TikTok lying about. It actually is a good mascara. But <laughs> anyway, I picked this one because the brush, like I need these kind of teeny tiny little brushes to grab onto my teeny tiny little lashes. I don't know, like I'm just not a mascara girl. You know, some people be like trying mascaras and talking about them. I think it's because they have lash to work with. So mascara can actually make a big difference to them. For me, it's just, it's like the warmest ice cube. It all just looks a little better than awful. I don't know. Tips, tricks, let me know. And don't say lash growing serums because I don't know if y'all heard, but those serums, the active ingredient, I can't remember what it's called, apparently will eat the fat pads around your eyes. Mm. Just saying, I know they don't all have it. And I did go through a lash serum phase, but I stopped because I heard that like a couple years ago about the serum thing, melting your fat pads, I stopped them because I don't want that. <laughs> a little bit of lips, 
And then we'll get out of here. Oh, wait, I did get this too. This is the Stila Stay All Day Dual Ended Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. I actually picked this up because my daughter bought herself some for Christmas. And every time I look at her eyeliner, it's so crisp and dark and black and I was like, what is that? She told me it was a Stila one, so I went to get it. I did, however, get the double-ended one. My thought process was if I got the one with the teeny tiny little, cause there's like a regular felt tip here and then yeah, there's the teeny one right there. If I wanted to get really close in my inner corner on my little tiny hooded eyes, that probably would help me. That was my train of thought. I used eyeshadow for eyeliner today, so obviously I'm not getting a lot of use out of this yet, but I thought I'd try it. I had to restock my Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Cheat. There's not much to say about this. It's just, if you like nude lips, you'll probably like this nude lip liner. My only beef with it is you can't ever really get a super good tip on this. Like the ones that have the wooden, which we'll talk about in a minute, you can get a nice crisp tip. This is a little creamier, a little more emollient. So it's good but not great. Let's talk about great. Again, with the makeup by Mario, right? This lip liner, I have wanted this since his campaign launched because if you look at his lips that he does on Kim Kardashian, he always does like her lip, that's so hard to explain. They almost look like they have a gray undertone, but not much, like a, like a drop that it, something about that accentuates her lip area more because it's a contrast to the color on the rest of her face. That's what I think at least. There's something about this kind of, and not cool, cause it's not pink. It's not like this baby pink that makes it this cool. It's, there's like a gray, I don't know, a taupe or a gray undertone to his lip liners. And this is smoky pink. And that's what exactly what I wanted. Like, I don't know if you can tell, but it almost has like a charcoal-y undertone. Am I crazy? Like I can't be, I have been wearing this nonstop since I got it. I knew I was gonna love it. So I'm really happy with it. I love that it comes with this little sharpener and there's like a little brush on the end. Like again, you can always tell when a makeup artist makes something cause I can just picture him doing his lip lines on his clients and then just being able to go back and forth with his brush, his pencil, his brush, his pencil, like anything to make the job easier and faster, which is why when I say I think makeup has come a long way, this is a good example of what I mean. This is the kind of stuff I wanna see, really strong staples. Don't give me friggin' Hershey Kisses themed makeup collections or what other stupid shit we were seeing for a while there. This is Toasty. I haven't used this one yet, but you know, I wanted something nude that's more pink. I wanted something more on the brown side. It's very, very nude like very brown. This is clearly pink, this is clearly brown. The formula though is what gets me. Not only does this type of pencil, again, it's got that wooden side, get super sharp. The formula is so easy to work with. Like the Charlotte Tilbury one, I think it's like waxy. Like when you go over it, it builds up and it gets kind of chunky, this doesn't. So these might be my new favorite lip liners of life. Please let me know what other colors you have. I know everyone's really going bananas for the color Hue that he has right now. I don't know why I said it like that. I guess I used to know a guy named Hue. <laughs> let me know if there's any other ones you like. Three lipsticks and we're done. You guys will notice there's no lip glosses, no lip gloss in this haul. That's cause lip gloss is a in-person thing for me. I can't buy lip gloss online. All of this was online. Lip gloss, I have to touch it. I have to look at it. I have to see how the light catches it. It's a whole thing. Um, if there are any lip glosses or lip gloss formulas or colors that you guys think I should check out and I should blindly believe you, cause I will, I trust you guys. Let me know, I will pick them up. This is the only Natasha Denona lip product I've ever tried. This is the My Dream. These colors are all gonna be identical, <laughs> but I don't know. From the minute I saw it online, I was like, I'm gonna like this. I don't know how I knew it. And I saw it when it first came out, like last year, I think this collection came out. My only gripe is I hate this packaging. It's like this orangey nude color with the black splotches. I don't, I don't know. It's not for me. It's not my favorite packaging I've ever seen, but the color is nice. It's just my only thing is this is a very thick lipstick. This is a patter, not a swiper. You know what I mean? So I do like it. It's exactly the type of color I was looking for. It's very shiny. It's got like a nice luminosity to it. I also have two for Makeup by Mario. This is Erin. I picked this up because it's that same smoke, smoky pink kind of color. In fact, I think he sells Erin and smoky pink in a set together for a reason. But it reminded me of like what I'm saying with that Kim Kardashian kind of lip where it's like almost, yeah, I still see it. I still see a little bit of this like 
gray in it or something. It's not taupe. Like there's something different to it that just, it creates a nice, like I said, contrast between the color of your skin and the color of your lips so that like it's nude, but it doesn't wash you out. And it still gives your lips a little dimension. You know what I'm saying? This is Bronx Baby. This is his satin formula. I was just trying, wanted to try some new formulas of lipstick because mostly I use Christian Audette. You guys know I love Christian Audette lipstick. And a lot of my lipsticks are expired. So I'm having to kind of start from scratch. This looks really brown. Ooh, yeah, these colors all look basically identical. <laughs> Especially the Natasha Denona My Dream and the Bronx Baby. The Bronx Baby one might be a smidge darker, but that's about it. Formula is really nice. I'm happy with all of these. That's it, you guys. I got through this massive makeup stash. I'm excited to finally take it all out of its boxes and put it in my vanity and start creating content with it. Again, please let me know if there's anything of particular interest you want to see dedicated videos or content around. Let me know if there's any trending videos you wanna see my take on, makeup looks, like whatever you guys want. I have a huge list of ideas. I just wanna play with beauty. And also if you haven't seen my update video on like what's been going on, what's happening, it's, it's all down below. I'm gonna get out of here and I will catch you guys in the next one.